Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Jay and Rob Toy Show, the live stream edition. Hopefully some of you were able to join us on Jinx Esports TV about an hour ago, checking out our discussion on play sets. We'll get that uh, covered tonight as well, at least a little bit. When I say we, of course, it's not just me. There's a two-person kind of dynamic we got going back and forth. A little tennis match, if you will. So let me introduce the evil in to my Tila, Mr. Jay Bartlett. Oh, that's, that's not, uh, oh, there he is, holding up a Joker dolly. Not just any, Cesar Romero, but he doesn't have the mustache, which I'm really bummed about that oh. he doesn't have that. Come on, that's just lazy, McFarlane. Well, we know what next Platinum Edition is going to be then. The mustachioed Romero. Oh, we'll get to that. What's up, buddy? How are you? Uh, doing good making some progress you know feeling good about uh, everything that's happened in the past week how about yourself i'm good enjoying the uh, canadian freezing cold weather <laughs> it's uh yeah that happened all of a sudden didn't it yeah do you ever wish that somehow like the the people predicting the weather could just say to you this is it this is the last nice day you're gonna get so enjoy it because i always wish that i know it's impossible but it would be nice. You could kind of live that final warm day. For anyone who's not in Canada, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. It's it's very cold here. I've never yeah. quite understood the art of meteorology, you know, being a weather person, because it's like the only job that I know that you don't really need to be right all that often. You kind of just give a best <laughs> effort. Is it going to rain? Maybe 60 percent, 70. So and you can even give a range 50 to 70 percent. It might rain. 50 50 i don't know could be right either way don't know i thought i'd always be a good weather person now and in some cases uh, as we've observed at four in the morning uh you <laughs> know when nobody's watching you could just say what the hell no one's watching anyway so that's a little inside uh, joke but anyways yeah back back in the day when we'd watch the weather channel at 4 a.m oh i remember those times <laughs> it was after we would watch uh wwf uh pay-per-view it was always after that because we were at your grandma's place and uh, sometimes we would rent the box and sometimes we didn't. So we would listen to it and watch it scrambled. Anyone who's old enough, as, as old as we are out there knows what scramble is where it's like all blue and squiggly and you can't quite make it out, but you could still hear it. So we would listen to it often like a radio broadcast. It's yeah. like an audio live stream. I don't know why they didn't like, like decode or like, uh, I don't know, somehow hide the audio signal. Like, you can hear all the matches and the results. I don't know. I, 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 yeah, I don't know. Because I guess wrestling is so visual, I guess. I don't remember there ever being, like, um, WWF radio stations or anything where you could listen to it. Although, I, you know, I loved it. My favorite commentator to this day is still Vince. I think he's got the best voice and he's the most articulate. But anyway, enough about wrestling. Well, let's get to an icebreaker this week. Of course, this icebreaker, like all our icebreakers, are brought to you by Big Bad Toy Store, Heroes Comics in London, Ontario, Retro Rags, Mock Masters, and of course, from our amazing Patreon backers who help keep this a free show for all of you. So thank you for all our supporting partners. Jay, the icebreaker this week uh, is all about toys and toy collecting, which should shock nobody. I want to know, what is the last figure that you got that truly blew you away when when you got it I, I showed her off um i think the first episode of season two of our live stream which was captain carter i don't have her here she's over there but it's marvel legends captain carter the what if uh series season one the very first episode what if steve rogers uh didn't become i almost said captain power <laughs> steve rogers didn't power become on. captain america captain and carter. Uh, agent carter it became captain america aka captain carter um i was so impressed with that figure uh the likeness is, is just incredible and it's just a really fun figure Did and that was not too long box? ago not yet i i still have to shoot that what if video i have all the collection to make the watcher they're all just sitting over there waiting yeah and, and you plan to open though right they're all getting open and you'll be proud of me i think i'm even going to toss the legends boxes I think I'm even going to just get rid of them, man. Yeah, that's a big, that's a big moment, my friend. That's a big moment, my friend. I'm very excited because they announced season two of What If, which is my favorite Marvel show so far. So that's cool. I will have to see when I get to that video. Still hard for me to throw at the boxes, but we'll see. 
the uh, the figure that last blew me away uh, was a figure line that I discovered while making action figure adventure. And there's been some great figures in between since then and now, of course, but like really kind of knocked my socks off. And we visited Mondo to get a studio tour and to see what was happening behind the scenes. And Brock over there showcased uh, a bunch of different figures from some of the notable lines. And he spotlighted the Ninja Turtles, the 12 inch Ninja Turtles that had the coloring from the Playmates line, uh, but were 12 inch scaled. And they look like the Mirage figures mm -hmm. uh, a little bit. And I didn't get to actually hold them at that point because he was holding them and we were filming. So I never got to have that hands on experience. But because he talked about them, well, I just had to buy them because we needed a cutaway so we could shoot them. Uh, and well, when yeah. I got when I got Leonardo in particular, which was just sitting on my desk, uh, as it happened to be. I was just blown away by this figure. The other turtles are okay for their own rights. Donatello's bow staff is awesome. Michelangelo has actual chains for his nunchucks. Raphael's size look a little cartoony, but Leo, for whatever reason, just feels the most natural. Uh, they come with swappable heads with the red bandanas, if you want, as well, and some Mirage comic-specific uh, accessories. But getting this figure and feeling how poseable it is and how durable it just stands in place, I still have yet to see a figure since that fateful day in 2019 to just really blow me away the way that that line did and in particular leonardo yeah those are cool i actually prefer the uh the early turtles the more serious turtles when they they killed people and stuff i you know i didn't re i didn't read that book until honestly a few years ago i didn't know they killed shredder in like the first issue <laughs> yeah issue one I don't think he's been alert. I don't think that they expected it to take off, right? It was almost written yeah. like a joke, right? And uh, they killed the main bad guy right in the first issue. I was like, okay. Yeah, pretty much. And this is a figure, Jay, believe it or not, that I, I did the rule of two for. So I actually have oh, yeah. another one sealed. Now, given all our recent talk about pruning the collection, resisting the urge to buy toys, and we'll get an update on our bet soon, I could probably let the other one go because I'm just happy with what I got here. It's in a box, literally in storage. You know, what's it going to sit on the box? Again, these rule of twos that we have for something we can't display necessarily. It's a tough one. Yeah, and it's interesting how over the years, even if you go back a couple of years to when we started this podcast. A um, year ago was our first live stream. A year ago. Two years ago for Action Figure Adventure, but... How I could, we would have sworn by the rule of two. And now it's like, well, space is an issue. Money's an issue. So you really you can't have it all, right? You really have to weigh out what's more important to you. So for me, I've kind of, uh, for Origins, for example, I, I bought two of every one, right? Um, so if, if I continue that line, it's going to be all on the card because they're all on my wall. They look fantastic um, in the package. So I'm going to decide with the line you know i'm going to either open them all or i'm going to keep them all in the package it's going to be this or that so you are continuing with origins then because last time we no, talked no i said i don't said i said done. i don't know i said i don't know i'm no, not you said no 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 no. you said no. you're done because you had a chance to get the recent wave with the sorceress and buzz off yeah. and jitsu and you said no i'm good i don't want it and that's going to bring me up to our, our bet if you want to get into that what i saw Okay, let's talk about the bet. Can you refresh everybody that's yeah. uh, that's tuning in what our current bet is and the stakes? So we've kind of both been a little bit burnt out. Um, and there's nobody burning us out besides ourselves, right? We're our own worst enemies. So Rob kind of came up with the idea of, hey, how about while the Jay and Rob Toy Show Season 2 airs on Jinx every Wednesday night, um, through the entirety of that season, we won't buy a single action figure and the first one to crack... I don't know. I still think we should have a bet besides making fun of each other. We should have some kind of stakes, I think. Maybe we should come up with that tonight. Uh, but anyway, that's the bet. And so I want to ask you, I'll get into it. So have you kept good on this bet a week later? I've kept good. Uh, I did catch myself a few times looking at some new releases, just randomly going to Big Bad Toy Store, seeing what was out there. No purchases, no pre-orders, nothing. Um, you can look. You're allowed to look. Yeah, but you know, I don't need to look if I can't buy. I don't, I'm not, I've never been a window shopper. I've never wanted to look. Even when we go to toy stores, well, if I'm going, I gotta, you know, it's one of those things. But I gotta tell you, there was at least an instance, I think, for both of us that we're like, oh goodness, how am I gonna get through that in the past week? 
Okay, well, my experience is a little different. So I, was, right. out, I was out and I saw a few things that I hadn't seen. So I don't know if it's just me, wrong place, wrong time with new stuff. It's usually how it works with me. But I finally saw the Wind Raider for Origins and I got to hold it. It really wasn't that difficult. Um, it's a pretty sweet piece. I managed to put it down. The one that, that almost got me, I did see that beautiful Sandman that you got from the Spider-Man 6-inch retro line. I saw that, and I had it in my hand. I was like, ah. But I put him down. I let him go to the next collector. Oh, my goodness. So the fact that you actually went as far as holding these. I did, yeah. That's going right to the edge. Well, I got to ask you yeah. about the thing that I think tempted you the most, and that's the Thundercats wave that was announced and uh, is now up for pre-order. This was a line that you told me uh, every time the figures come out, oh, I'm all in, I'm all in on it. Yeah, 100%. Still going to be all in. The great thing about the Thundercats Ultimates by Super 7 is they don't sell out. They sell out once they've been released. I'm not the biggest uh super seven fan i i don't have the, the the most vast knowledge of that toy company but they seem to really jump ahead with what's coming out and of course you know everything that's going on in the world production is really slow but we got wave one of four figures then we got wave three missing chitara because she had production issues so we only got three figures in wave three wave two has still not been released for whatever reason uh and then they previewed wave five which, well, wave four uh, had Jaga, right? And I think that came out, didn't it? Or was that wave, wave three? Wave that was wave three. Uh, okay. Jaga, Captain Cracker, and Slythe. And Chitar was supposed to be in that. There's one Thundercat per wave. And uh, that came out, but two hasn't come out yet. And four has been previewed. And then they just showed five with one of our favorites, Hammerhand, is in wave five. I was like, oh, dude. <laughs> like, Forget the the mirror verse lion or whatever that red yeah. lion is. I saw the hammer hand. I was like, oh. and oh, Vulture Man. Was the same Vulture way. Man is awesome too. Um, so they'll still be up for pre order long after the bed's done. So I'm not. I, I think it's the Thundercats curse, man. That franchise with those figures. I don't know what it is. Mattel had it. They started doing like Maddie Collector for it. Didn't go far, and then Super Seven tried to take it over. Didn't go far in the same style and now finally super seven is bringing it back like under their ultimates i've never had a problem with super seven across the board ever all their turtle stuff has always shipped all their master stuff has shipped there's been some weird paint stuff that like some hardcore fans have noticed like she's eyes look a little weird in this version maybe the ankle joints look a little weird in that version but in terms of shipping and delivery it's been across the board i, I haven't seen any issues like that it just seems to be a thundercats thing unfortunately yeah um the super seven thundercats made me fall in love with that series again it was one i was aware of as a kid i watched it here and there and i had some of the vintage stuff but for me it was always masters of the universe it was always uh uh i liked it better uh it's kind of the opposite now where i prefer the thundercats but anything that super seven does man it's just insane i mean they're by far i think my favorite company as far as details go what's funny is that i was smitten with a nega duck figure from the dark yeah. duck line and and i can't even tell you what line is from and i don't even care that much anymore which just goes to show the impulse of seeing something new and hit in the the fear of missing out like click gotta have it click gotta have it oh, i can't wait to get it and and yeah. like your pile that you mentioned last week of toys sitting like uh, off to the side for your for your youtube channel stuff for yeah. your reviews yeah. that you do I've got toys like that too. And I had stuff still coming in the mail. So the dopamine that I got from clicking the button and pre-ordering was instantly replaced by actually having to touch the toy that was in front of me instead of the one yeah. that was on the screen that I'm going to wait for in six months. And let's make no mistake here. This is not us preaching to anybody out there in TV land. Um, this is just pure Rob and myself purely being burnt out from constantly just I don't know, feeling like, you know, you're just chasing, you're just chasing. And and we kind of just were talking the other week and we kind of just wanted to sit back and just really enjoy what we have because there's piles of stuff that we haven't got to. And it's like, you know, when is enough enough? You know, when when is it time to just sit back and be a little <laughs> bit content with what you have? Uh, well, my, my bank account certainly says it's time. So <laughs> this bet yeah. comes uh, perfect, perfect timing. I, I feel like what's going to be more interesting is what is the item that's going to push us off 
the edge and that we just have to snap grab it that's what i'm curious for uh our yeah. good friend trent from toy power podcast he, he had what he called the t-stop the trend stop we stopped collecting for a good few months and it was yeah. funny there they were talking about all the new toys that would come up on their show and it's like is this gonna break the t-stop and he eventually started getting a few figures here and there and he had some of his own rules but uh it's all because we love the toys but you know, if we want the good toys, we got to save our money for the best toys out there. We can't just buy everything that comes. So much space, so much money, you know. Yeah, what did I get? Well, I showed you the other day. I got that uh, Spider-Man um, six-inch classic Legends. I got the Webman. I don't know who the hell Webman is. I don't know that story, but I felt the need to get him because I love that line. And he's on that got card. Him. I know you passed up on him after you saw yeah. mine. And I, I have him. He's He's with the others on the wall there. And... I got to tell you, I'd rather have Sandman. So it just goes to show you, it's just like, you don't need absolutely everything that comes out. I mean, I'm not personally connected to Webman. I never read that Dr. Doom story. I have no idea about that character other than reading on the card back. So yeah, I just think it's time we both step back, reevaluate and uh, just chill out for a bit and save money. Ish. Yeah, Cactus <laughs> Cactus Jamie is uh, reaching out saying he loved the episode from uh, Jinx Esports TV tonight in Canada, in which we discuss and break down play sets and some of the must-have features and which lines do it the best and he's saying there's a surprising lack of star wars play sets you know i i guess that's true there i went on a bit of a tirade about how much i love star wars play sets but i i think star wars is always that barometer when it comes to everything action figures you know sometimes other lines peak above it most of the time they peak below it but star wars is always kind of constantly cool i yeah i think because i've i've collected star wars my whole life so for me it was like it's not that i didn't want to talk about them i i just wanted to kind of talk about other things because i just the death star is always here the land of the jawas is always here the falcons always here so it was it was a little bit more fun to just go outside of the star wars box for a bit and uh cactus jamie i love your uh turbo graphics logo you have for yourself that's really cool Absolutely. Jay, you wanted to talk about three specific things tonight, so we should probably transition and do that. The first one being that rank smell over on HasLab when you visit that of the Rancor dying and just bleeding backers at this point. And this so, is after a bunch of reveals have happened. Do you want to weigh in on this? I feel like you've got a lot to yeah, say. Yeah, I have the statistics there. So as of precisely 20 minutes ago, uh, there's 12 days left in the campaign, and they have 4,750 backers. It was well over 5,000, so they're hemorrhaging backers upon the reveal of, which I think was the second tier. So here it goes. So when they reach 11,000 backers, you're going to get a Gamorrean Guard on a Power of the Force card, which was the 1985 card from the original Kenner line, the, the final card. You get the medallion with it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the Gamorrean Guard itself, to my knowledge, is just a repack of the uh, deluxe Gamorrean Guard. We'll wait till Rob gets it up here. Yeah, there he he's, is right there. He's got soft goods, though, here, like on his uh, furry underwear, very He-Man-like. Yeah, okay, sure. So that's not bad. Let's see what happens when we get to 13,000 backers. Okay, now here's where the crap hit the fan, so to speak. So you get essentially a diorama because that's what this is made for you're going to put it on your shelf you're going to take nice shelfies you want it to look like the rancor pin java's palace you get bones skeletal I don't get, I don't get this this is where like i immediately back away because th could this not have just been part of the packaging anyways okay so there is um a black widow marvel legends figure that came out maybe two years ago when the movie was supposed to originally come out, she's all in white. She's $40 or over $40 because she comes with all these explosions, you know, that Hasbro likes to pack in those explosions, which I love, but because yeah. she came with all that stuff, she was another $12. This is what that reminds me of. It's extra pieces that in my opinion, for a $350 us, action figure should have already come with the cardboard background and the skulls i'm right. just saying man so for that to be a tier two that should be tier one if anything keep sure. going keep going now this one sixteen thousand. you get salacious crumb not on the power of the force so the card back is a reissue of the vintage collection and now we've done salacious crumb in a six inch scale why rob 
is because he looked down on the, the the grate and was laughing. Why is this character here? Well, because you know he needs to be here. That yeah, he but that's not an here. answer. Like why? No, why but because he... we can put it there and put him with this card back, and isn't that cool? But it's not making sense when the others are on the power of the force. It's lazy. Now, this is the one I messaged you about at 19,000. We have the, the final reveal so far. It's You need to get 19,000 backers for this. You're not even at five. I'm not a Hasbro hater, okay? So I don't want it to come across like that. Um, anyone who knows me knows that this is my absolute favorite toy, uh, the Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker from Return of the Jedi. But if we may uh, blow my picture up a little bit here, um, now they say that it is a better version of this one that came out in 2018, 2019. Um, we've only seen art mock-ups of it, but this is the pretty much the figure you're going to get, except for what they call a better head sculpt for Luke. Now, why does this figure not come with the bone, the femur bone? It does. Can come anybody? With the bone. I don't see it on the package Watch. at all. Right here. Okay, but I don't see it in the mock-up. Well, it's right here. It's being advertised with it right uh, there. I, all I saw, so I didn't see that. All I saw was him on the card back and exactly the same stuff that he came with here, the guard's gun, the lightsaber, which he shouldn't even have in this package anyway. And um, yeah, and there's no bone. I don't see any bone there. So it's weird for me, but some little weird attention to detail. If you put the femur bone with him there, I would have been a yes. lot more excited. See, there's the bone right there in his hand again. Maybe that's one of the bones sure. that comes at that other tier level. I'm going to say, yeah, but I still think. Am I, am yeah, I just it's right weird? here. It's right here. Is it? It's weird. Oh, yeah, okay, but it doesn't come in the Luke package. So now my final issue I have with this, before I'll say some positive things about that, my final issue is that because these figures are on Power of the Force cards, who in their right mind is going to open them? try nobody there's no way you're going to crack open that card so you're left with these figures for a diorama that you're not really going to set up in the first place that's my two well, again, cents i want to know i want to know what you think uh, again the luke you can easily get the version that you have so that's an easy one to keep on card and put on your dolly shelf and make yourself feel better every time you look at it and think you're a really good collector because you didn't crack the package that's why that's how you get through the day no problem easily done now as far as the bones hey gotta have those bones i, I mean who's gonna open the bones up are those bones on card or in bag are those gonna be collectible later gotta keep the bones keep them in a baggie a little baggie of bones that's awesome salacious crumb i don't know like you know they gotta keep adding these characters these big characters that really tell that scene so salacious crumb you're gonna have like above the scene well with, like, look at look look at the diorama so you can see the grate where Java yeah. drops everybody. So I guess you can kind of hang him can from you, the cardboard. Can you like, perch him there? I don't like, know. It, I, not really. Not by the look of this. He, he's pretty, uh, you know, dense So there. everyone is up in arms because they think two figures should have been tier unlocks right away. One being, of course, um, I'm going to screw his name up, Malachi or Malik or whatever. The, 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 the Rancor Malachi, Keeper. Think, the Rancor Keeper. And second would be Ula the Dancer people seem to think that those two tiers now if you're recreating this luke skywalker scene which it appears that's what they're doing ula's long gone so i don't really care that she's not in it that's fine uh the rancor keeper i think is a no-brainer we haven't yeah. seen him in the black series at all so again is it lazy they just don't want to to create the sculpt i don't get it man help me out here help me understand i i think as far as ula because she is so associated with the rancor they're afraid of the slave leia thing objectifying women with scantily clad uh, outfits sure. and they don't want that to be a thing but come on this is not leia this is ula it's somebody different you're not taking your main hero and kind of reducing her to nothing even though it's part of the story and all that kind of stuff yeah. completely different i think you could get away with it because it's ula and not leia specifically i don't see the value yet i mean figures are what everybody wants with these Haslab projects all of them we got hot rod with unicron we got scarlet and uh ace and what three other guys know. other than yeah. scarlet yeah with, yeah with the sky striker makes sense these figures a little like obscure like again give me luke with something that he doesn't have somewhere else not just on a different card back i i'm easy with luke skywalker all you had to do uh, honestly rob i'm that crazy with luke if you would have put the bone 
on the card. I might have backed this thing because that would have been or put them in a unique package, where like the old ninety five Kenner Power of the Force two stuff, where they're all just slotted in there, like with the Rancor, so that you can just look at it like a bubble window with them all in there. So you can just put it on the shelf, have to do nothing, zero effort required, folks. Just give them the money. So it's what's going on at at Hasbro there, like 19,000 backers. So they obviously expected the power of Star Wars to just explode. Um, And then I heard people in forums saying, you know, the paint apps don't look great. Of course, this is also within the prototype phase, right? The paint apps don't look great. One of the live streams, there was like a crack in one of the fins of the Rancor. And and that's a little nitpicky. It's a little nitpicky, right, for me. But But I also think part of the problem is you've got three major projects up in HasLab right now. And you've got people that are going to be crossover fans of all three of them. You've got Ghostbusters, G.I. Joe, and Star Wars. Chances are, on some level, you like two of the three, or probably collect two of the three, or would consider collecting two of the three, but you're only going to back one HasLab. So you're dividing your fan base right there. And and surprisingly to me, the Proton Pack crushed its target. It is over 30% from the goal that it had set right there. And had a higher price point than the Rancor. Rancor was at 349 US. This is at 399. And it's yeah. over it. This also has the help of a movie in theaters right now. Gee, I wonder if, if, if that was a coincidence. And speaking yeah. of that, I don't know why they didn't save the Rancor till uh what would it be? Only next two, year. two more two more years two more or next year yeah. would be the the uh, 40th of Return of the Jedi. That would have been great. I think you would have seen a lot more excitement for it. Um, I hope it gets funded. I hope anything that Hasbro does is successful because when they win, we win. But this crowdfunding stuff, I got to say, is we've talked about the turtle van last episode. And it's yeah. just that stuff's crazy overpriced for me. The Thunder Tank is way overpriced. Um, I get it. They are elite collector's pieces. Um, you know, I think the Razor Crest is worth it. But if I may touch further on the Black yeah. Series and why I don't think the Rancor works is because for world building, Star Wars is far beyond just the characters. It's ships and worlds and planets and playsets. You can't really do that with a six inch scale. You're never going to see an X Wing. You're never going to see a Falcon. Those are two characters in their own. I think Star Wars is best when it's at the 3.75 inch scale, to be honest. You're going to get better detail at six inch, sure. But um, we're, well, we're going to miss out on think, a ton of stuff. I, I honestly think that if you're going to do a Black Series six inch uh, HasLab, it has to be something with a bigger scene so you can build around it. Something that really anchors a bigger moment than such a cornered scene. Yeah, the Rancor scene is obviously very memorable, but it's limited. And maybe that's what they're trying to say. Like, you look, you get it all in one. You get all these characters and stuff. But if you would have done like an ad app, you could have had all your snow troopers there. You could have had your rebel soldiers. Uh, there's already a speeders out there that you could build around that whole base as well. You can have Luke and Han and everything that you can populate that so that just you add something to what you've already got going, not starting something new to, to be the anchor. You know what I mean? There's already so many yeah. pieces of the world for Hoth, for example, as the ad at or doing like a Dagobah play set. You could do a six-inch Dagobah playset, very minimal kind of set kind of thing, and still have enough cool things going there. People would have backed it. Exclusive Yoda. Maybe you have a Ghost of Obi-Wan figure in there, too. Lots of different options you could have done. And, and play sets, that's always the way to go. Yeah. Uh, what a fun topic. Right behind me, and I know we're going to talk about uh, the Batman McFarlane stuff. Right behind me is the uh, the the Batcave. And I was hoping that the backdrop for the Rancor would look like that. I mean, this is just a simple plastic unfolding playset. Yep. Uh, but I think for three hundred and fifty dollars, we deserve something like that. And this is from McFarland. This thing is like forty fifty dollars. It's so cheap, it's crazy. Um, so, I would, so to ex- get just... I would expect it four walls for a diorama thing. The the grate yeah. in front, the door, four walls to actually put this yeah. thing in, or that you can at least open up wide if you want. Or like showcase like the the door on the one side and, and you're looking through basically where the camera is. For for that price, you know, um, yeah. I expect a bit more. So for now, I'm going to pass. I mean, if Jedi Knight Luke didn't get me, I'm pretty sure I'm safe for that one. And it's too bad because, I mean, that is such an iconic scene in Return of the Jedi. Um, so I get why they picked it, but yeah. I think more importantly, this probably spells the end for Black Series HasLab projects. Or if they're going to come back, it better be something awesome. 
uh, to win, and they may have to pick uh, a better time when they're going to do it. I'm a huge fan of the 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 Razor Crest that is coming out. I think it's shipping now. Um, I think that was a brilliant move, and people were excited because that scale makes sense for that. Yeah. Um, so if that's it, and I, you know, I'll I'll still collect a few uh, six inch figures here and there, but. It's just too much money to uh, to to give me what I want from Star Wars at that uh, scale. Well, you've already talked about the Batman sixty six line showcasing that beautiful Bat Cave in the backdrop there. What is when did you first discover this line? And I'm kind of surprised you're all in and on as much as you and I both like Batman. The sixty six <laughs> era is, is not an era that you've ever really you know been a, a flag waver for. No, it's it's been part of our childhood, but it was quickly eclipsed by everything from eighty nine after. Yeah, I mean, we, I guess we grew up with that. I would say you and I grew up more with Super Friends than we did uh, the 66 Batman. But uh, I was in Walmart and I accidentally saw it. I, I saw images of it, you know, a year ago or whatever they showed it at, whatever toy show that they're coming out. Like, those are really detailed. Those look pretty cool. And then I happen to be in Walmart and I go down the toy aisle and I, you know, barely look now because there's never anything. And they had everything except the Batcave. So they had Batman and uh, Joker and the Batmobile. And I couldn't believe the price. They were $20 each Canadian. The Batmobile, I, f I can't remember. I think it was only 30 bucks. And uh, I picked them up. And um, I had to get Robin on eBay because, of course, he's the harder one to find. I I'm really pleased with them. The, um, let's pick up Robin here. The one gripe, of course, if you've anyone has seen these, is... The plastic McFarlane has chosen to use is ridiculously hard. Uh, ah. So consequently, they do not bend. Like, look, look, I can't even, like, I'm going to snap his arm off, right? Um, so trying to get them in the Batmobile is not fun. They look cool. Yes, they do look cool. Um, but I guess, you know, you get what you pay for kind of thing. The Batmobile, surprisingly, is awesome. I mean, it doesn't even touch the superpowers one. But it's really well done, and I just love how Todd McFarlane Toys has uh, kept everything relatively cheap and affordable for everybody. I think that's a huge plus and uh, advantage he has over a lot of the other toy companies. I want to pick up on somebody uh, in our chat. Akira Sun here is, is bringing out the one concern I have with the line, and this is a line I have in its entirety as well. I have everything that you have pointed out there. Just It's waiting to ship to me from our good friend Tater in, in the South. He was able to pick it yeah. all up. He, he just happened to be in Target when I said, hey, do you see ever come in, the, in contact with the Batman stuff? He's like, I'm actually staring at it right now, and he picked me up literally all that uh, in the Joker, of course. But the first images I saw that kind of turned me off were the Batmobile with, the, with Batman and Robin in them. And they don't fit and sit down like they should. They do. You know, they seem a little higher up than they need to be. And, and Akira they, Sun, who's, who's watching, yeah. is showcasing the difference of scale here. The Batcave is 1 18th, which is a little bit more G.I. Joe. The Batmobile is 1 16th. Yeah. And the figures are 1 12th. So there is certainly some, you know, there's a dichotomy between everything lining up. The Batcave, I'm okay because it's more of a backdrop. It could be a little bit bigger, sure, but I, I'm happy with what it is in terms of a display piece. The Batmobile feels off to me. The Batmobile is good. Um, what surprised me was on the back of the box, it showed Batman and Robin without their capes. And it's actually quite challenging to get them to go in there with their capes, how they should be and not hanging out the back. So it doesn't, you know, I don't, I don't have my gripes. It's not without the gripes, I should say. I mean, I'm surprised to see, you know, a couple episodes ago, I showcased Robin without the uh, mask. There's Adam West without the mask. There is a Joker with a mask. And then there's Batman and, and Joker with the surf shorts from the surfer episode. And that's where I'm like, okay, I'm I'm done with the line. Like it's great, but I'm I'm finished with it already. Uh, like you're doing variants this early, to me doesn't make a lot of sense. Like release uh, the Batman with the shorts, you know, four waves down, when it's harder to get Batman and Robin. Do you know what I mean? But to have all these variants right off the bat, and I don't remember. Again, I'm not a huge fan of the show, but I don't remember Batman or Robin ever having their mask off with their outfit. Oh yeah, you know there's a mean? few times. There was a few times was in there? the Batcave, not a lot. Like they're sure. very, very limited for sure. 
Uh, I'm curious if they're going to do all three Catwomen and, and if they're going to get to like a lot of the obscure villains. There's there's a whole bunch of characters they could do, of course. And, and for the longest time, I was actually really looking forward to this. This is from Mezco, five points. And this is all three and three quarter scale. And you get a full on yeah. cave here. And look at all the characters you get in this classic 66 Batman uh, rendition. Yeah. You get Alfred. Penguin, Riddler, Batman, Robin, Catwoman, and Joker, plus the Batmobile, plus the Batcave, all for one twenty nine US at GI Joe scale, which is yeah. pretty awesome deal, I think, for the cost and what you're getting, and it all scales together. Um, I have pre ordered and canceled this pre order about six or seven times now. I'm just so on the fence. Well, so here, here's the thing with that, right? You, we've just both said we're not huge fans of the adam west show it's good you know you know it was the first one but uh, you know i think if if you're like that looks like just a lot more you get a lot more bang for your buck right but um if you're a fan of it sure get both sets get the mezco and get the mcfarland but uh, i'm happy with just this first wave um I'm, I'm really pleased with it so yeah overall see it's a, it's it's a good little set man and it's really affordable which i like uh, you see, I'm already looking at these other pictures, Jay, and I'm struggling not to pre-order this because I'm falling in love with it all over, all over again. <laughs> well, get the get the McFarlane ones, and you'll have no problem opening them because the box art's yeah. not great, especially for the playset in the vehicle. Um, just check those out, man, because they're really nicely detailed. Um, yeah, Jacqueline, I wouldn't say they're cheap. Uh, maybe the plastic feels a little cheap. The sculpts are great, but yeah, yeah, let's go with that. The plastic does feel cheap. It feels like honestly, if Batman fell off my top shelf to the floor, he would shatter. That's what he feels oh. like. Wow, so, this yeah. is going to be a lower shelf uh, collector moment than I suppose. Lower shelf, or just put him in the Batmobile and they'll be fine. Yeah, well, there you go. Until Joker gets knocked over when the Bat Batmobile rocks him. Uh, what do you think about the fact that McFarlane went in this direction and didn't make it part of DC Multiverse? I mean, uh, Scott Wad was talking about that earlier. He's surprised it doesn't scale with Multiverse. Uh, he could have easily just made it part of that, and it would have fit with that whole scope of concept. The, I mean, the theme for our show is looking at old IP getting new toys, and this really fits that. Is this a surprise for you? Because it seems to be a surprise for me and a surprise that I wanted it right away. I don't know if there'd be a huge difference. I think these are five inch or six inch. Um, so, I mean, the DC multiverse are seven inch figures, sometimes taller. Uh, so to make a Batmobile one inch bigger or the place that one for one inch bigger figures is not a huge stretch. Um, I just think McFarlane is just trying to maybe capture on, you know, the Marvel legends have this Spider-Man nineties cartoon, you know, legend subline so i think he's trying to do that so you have the dc multiverse which is essentially the legends and now you have the classic batman tv series so it's kind of mirroring what hasbro's doing sure that makes sense i'm surprised there wasn't like a 35th anniversary moniker stamp on the packaging either given that it's the 35th anniversary of batman 66 ah, I, have, I have no clue um i don't yeah. know what that the one I the one I got the Robin the Chase or whatever it was without the mask I can't even remember what that said the Elite Collection or something the Platinum Platinum Edition yeah so I, quickly after I saw that and I'm a sucker for Robin like you are so I got it but then I'm like okay that's it I'm I'm good although you know the Frank Gorshin Riddler would be sweet and uh, Burgess Meredith Penguin would be awesome but uh, you got to draw the line somewhere you do. Uh, you want us to also to talk about the Ghostbusters Afterlife the toy lines that are, of course, Ghostbusters Afterlife is now in theaters and did very well at the weekend box office. I have not seen it. There won't be any spoilers here tonight. Jay, have you seen it? <laughs> um, I've seen enough. I've seen enough. I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to say anything. Um, I've been really researching it the last few days, almost obsessively. Wow. Uh, I don't know if we should go down this road because uh, you're not going to like what I have to say. So maybe we'll maybe we'll save that for another show. <laughs> oh, well, I, I always reserve judgment until I can actually see things and, and wait for myself. I, I know that yeah. I, I heard one of like the post credit scenes does something uh, that I'm not always a big fan of. So there, there's that. Uh, but the movie seems to be doing good. A lot of people seem to think it's a good continuation of the first film. And somehow kind of erases the video game for sure. And maybe Ghostbusters too. But the toy lines is what you wanted to talk about. Uh, of course, we've got the Plasma series, which is the Hasbro 
Ghostbusters moniker for for everything since they took over from Mattel two or three years ago, I believe. Now you picked up originally the first wave of stuff, which was based on yeah. the first film. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll just I'll just say this: uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife follows the formula of the Force Awakens. So take that how you will. I'll just say that. Um, yeah, the the first wave of the Plasma series was pretty much every figure I I could ever want in a Ghostbusters line, except for Lewis, who was an exclusive to Target, I believe, with the other Terror Dog. Um, but you got uh, Dana and the four guys, and you got Gozer, and then all the, the build a figure was the the one Terror Dog. You get the other one with Lewis. The figures are fantastic. They look exactly like the actors. They're um, more realistic so they they stay away from the cartoon versions kind of like you know diamond select went cartoony yeah or they, they did yeah. both didn't they did they, uh, do both? they did do both they did do both yeah okay so it stays away from the real ghostbusters cartoon stuff and sticks to the, the motion picture and uh i was really happy with that and i've come across only one of the new ones and that's uh old peter i guess you know call him old luke i guess old peter is the only one i've seen there you go there's there's the figures there um now the peter again i haven't seen the movie but the peter to me but go back to pete for a sec he just I'm, looks like i'm, I'm scooching um, over to him as soon as we get to yeah him. no it's okay he just looks like the very first version of peter and they've just swapped the head out uh you same the same can be said about ray um now i don't know if that's true or not it would seem something you know i wouldn't throw past hasbro to uh to do that but uh i don't know man i gotta see the film uh before i can get behind these like you i will reserve judgment although i gotta tell you man i'm not excited at all like at all and oh I'm you're probably for it. you're probably I'm really opposite, excited yeah. for it I'm really excited for it. I mean, I like mystery films. There's a mystery going on. I'm wary of the whole reboot thing. It has obviously a Stranger Things vibe to it. Um, I'm wondering how much fan service there is versus just trying oh. to treat it as something new. Like you're itching. We will get to it in 90 days when it's released on home video and streaming services. Probably Valentine's Day, maybe Easter, depending on when Easter falls is what they're going to target. Yeah. Uh, so we'll, yeah. we will see what happens there. Uh, we will transition from that subject because I can tell you already. Yeah. <laughs> I need to boil over. Do you want to get okay. to your spotlight, or do you want, or do you need to let off some steam? No, no, no. It's good. Again, I haven't seen it. It's just everything I've read, and I don't let people's opinions sway me. But it's things I've seen and I've read. Um, we'll, we'll just we'll leave it at that. We'll just leave okay. it at that. All right. You're um, always wary of, of any sequel, so I, I kind of can guess where you're at. Well, I'm just, I'm very wary of, I don't even want to say that they've turned it into something that it, that it never was because Ghostbusters almost instantly became something. The cartoon came out very quickly and mm -hmm. all the toys came out and stuff. So I'm not even going to say that it's become that because it already was that. Again, we'll we'll have to save this discussion for later. But the the tone of it is just something that was never. Well, never this is what we talked be, but... about. Uh, the film they've now retitled Ghostbusters: Answer the Call, the one with the four female leads, where they were aiming for a comedy film first, and then a ghosts paranormal thing second. And I think that's why that failed, because the first Ghostbusters was very much about the science and paranormal first with people that are funny and naturally they're living comic lines but still keeping everything and playing it straight as if there are ghosts and and there are okay uh, i i got i just gotta let something out i'm not gonna there's no spoilers here okay so everyone can relax here we go you're going big and, and and i've actually seen this scene i've seen this scene i'm not gonna tell you where but i've seen it and it's where egon's granddaughter uncovers the trap and this is what i don't like rob i don't like how this equipment has all all of a sudden become like the lightsaber it's like this ancient artifact that they all kind of bow to it, it's just it bugs me so much there was no close-ups in the first one of any proton pack or any of that stuff it was just kind of like their equipment right and now it's become like this stuff of legend it's like, well, what about the 50-foot marshmallow man that happened in 1984? 
you know, they're, they're so, they're so like, oh, I can't believe this equipment is real. It's like, what are you talking about? Just dig up any newspaper article or video footage and you can see what happened in New York here. Okay. Rant over, rant over. I, I'm hoping that they do that because nothing bothers me more than like a mass world event, like something that would have happened in maybe the biggest city in the world, New York, like being forgotten when it's really only been like 30, 40 years. Like that's but, not a long that's time. That's what I... Like we're talking I know, that's about what I'm World talking War about. II and World War One still, and have tons of footage like that. So that's I don't quite understand about. the mystery, and hopefully it's not that mysterious. You that's know, what I mean. Hopefully... It's that like see this equipment, like it's like the like Luke Skywalker's lightsaber or something. I'm like, I understand why it's being revered. I totally get why it's being revered, and I think it's yeah. okay that it's revered and like, wow, this is special. But don't act like it's you know the Ark of the Covenant. Because there yeah. should probably be lots of images out there. And the other proton pack should be somewhere too. Unless they were destroyed because they're all unlicensed nuclear accelerators. Okay, you know? so this is complete amateur hour. Robot Menace, last comment. You're absolutely correct. I'm going to silence myself because I'm doing something that I often criticize others for, which is judging something before it comes yeah. out. Or before I've seen it, I should say. So yeah, um, yeah, you're right. Jay. Within the context of the film, I'm sure it makes perfect no, sense. judge it by the trailer. And I've and I'm almost all the way through Master. I don't need that scene. I don't need that scene. I don't need to see old Bill Murray come out of retirement. I don't you, need to see you that. You do need to see it. You do. I need don't want to just see like that. you no, need I to don't. see old Luke throw a lightsaber away. You need all of that. No, I don't. You need it all. Yes, Thank you do. It Thank completes you, Disney. the arc. It completes. The I'm arc. having PTSD from Last <laughs> Jedi and The Force Awakens. I'm like, I don't want to see old Ray. I don't want to see old Winston. And for the oh. love of God. I don't want to see Egon. Please don't do that. Yeah, but we me. can't it's recast right? them because people would be upset if we told a new story that took off, like that started no. at the events after the other one. My PTSD them. is in full force. I can't, can't deal with this. We got to change can't subject. Okay. For some because reason, we're not James allowed. Bond is the only franchise that allows us to move forward with stories and recast actors, but that's okay. Because Ed we're Batman. not allowed to buy any toys, I had to pull from the million other boxes. Oh, for action figure spotlight. Action figure spotlight. Um, what, do you what do you got? This is where we show off our toys. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, this is a show that I was late to the Netflix series, The Defenders, which is uh, takes Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and Daredevil. And they're a team. Of course, it was a comic for years. So help uh, this me God, a Jay, if you show yeah. another Marvel legend for three weeks in a row. Well, it's either that or the Jedi Luke. Or if you want me to grab, what else can I grab? No, yeah, you've, this already, is just, you've already started down the path. Your new this is something has that, been fully cemented. That's and, it. And this is Ladies something and that is <laughs> every week until the until the yeah. jinx run is done. All you're getting is the what if line, and the final reveal will be the watcher that's built. Sorry to spoil it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Rancor. Rancor. Uh, <laughs> this is one that I got. It's an Amazon exclusive. This came out, I think, in 2018. Oh, well, you gotta um, get it then. No, it's super, super like back into Daredevil over the last couple of years. And gotta get uh, it. I got to be completely honest. This was the only thing on my desk. So I just got to grab what's on my <laughs> desk. And uh, I was deciding if I was going to open this or not. But you can see I, I'm so bad with the camera. There we go. So we got Daredevil and uh, Jessica Jones, also known as Jewel. I didn't know that either. Iron Fist mm -hmm. and Luke Cage. I, I want to know, do you guys think I should open this? The, the only reason I really want this is the badass Daredevil figure in there. He's just so cool looking. But I haven't broke the seal. Look at it. It's all shiny and sealed up. They actually what's had on a the second side? one of... What's on the side? Show, show the... Oh, yeah, the, what's on the, what's on the yeah, back? That's all their uh, images. And there's the... Uh, oh, there's a nice scene right there. That's what they look like out of the box. See, I can make a cool scene like that. But you've got the scene there. So why do you need to take them out? You can just look at that picture. Because one of my favorite human senses, my friend, is touchy touchy. So uh, until you have the figure in your hand, you really don't get the full effect. I don't know. Defenders. And yet you I like praised it. Captain yeah. Carter earlier. Come I on. like it. Whatever. Whatever. That's my. That's my thing. Shot. Go ahead. Go show what you got. Well, I'm the big hero, and I have an exclusive thing too. Oh, buddy, look at me. Uh, this is from another line I probably talked too much about, and I just got some mail from Loot Crate. And ladies and gentlemen, look at this. This is Danny from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. <laughs> now, 
Danny can be yours. You know, the guy that took a carton of cigarettes and should have done better. And wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, stop, stop, stop. What? Did, what? They, Danny. did they really put the Sid Vicious shirt on him? They got the license to put Sid Vicious. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there it is. I, ladies and gentlemen, that was a badass in 1990. Look out. It's Danny. I'm Daniel from Transformers. The movie could beat him up. Yeah, but, but you um, get two heads, cool. Jay, that look like one is like, I can't wait to be a part of the foot, which is this one right here. Like, I've joined the foot. And this one's like, oh, my God, I joined the foot. What was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> what have I done with... Are they different colors? <laughs> one's black one's, and red. His right? hair comes down over one, and it's like revealing oh. the other one. So, yeah, you know, that's, the, the, the that's slight totally one... an alternate head that you need to have. That's the guy you I need don't... on your shelf. I don't remember that character like being the greatest in the films but you know me i'm a fan of the obscure one-offs and I'm, it's really cool that they made him look at splinter telling him don't you don't want to join the foot and casey jones being like hey, don't, don't be a ninja <laughs> don't be a ninja i trained my sons to be a ninjas regrets <laughs> yeah and casey jones don't join the turtles hit him with this golf club instead <laughs> it's not now attempted murder. now ladies and gentlemen do i open this exclusive piece of treasure or do I? I'll tell I you what you do with that, Chuckles. You put it, you put it right back in the post, right back to where it came from. You might knock into your defender's box. You're gonna mail, mail back. I'm Amazon. mailing that back to. Who's that nope. exclusive to? Kmart. Crate. Loot crate. But <laughs> hey, Jay. But that's not it. There's more. But wait, there's more because, of course, I didn't buy it just for the figure. I wanted to buy it for this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles coaster. I'll, let me go big here on the screen look i got a shredder coaster and there's turtles on one side so i can i can feel how saucy i, I feel am i feeling like a ninja turtle or am i feeling like a shredder and jay because i i need pins in my life too oh look <laughs> at you casey jones i'm an i'm a ninja turtle yeah you look like something weird buddy yeah what's wrong with you see that could be us we could put those pins on us and of course of course i had to get this as well this space is... balls the lunchbox <laughs> Pretty That's what much. this reminds me of. <laughs> Pretty much. Here you go. The big yellow uh, hero shirt. You just need that, don't you? So there oh, you go. Man, you're not going to wear that, are you? Uh, No. This is going to our next Patreon backer. They get to have this if they want. <laughs> 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 They're not getting that. That's too cool. Um, that is go I'm going to put that in like a shadow box and put it on the wall with Danny stapled to it. Okay, so you gotta track down. We gotta track down the actor and see if we can get him on the show. No, and uh, talk to him about that figure. Where are you drawing the line with the movie guys? Because I thought you said you were done. Yeah, I forgot that I ordered this, and so I, I <laughs> pretended to get. I pretended to get excited again for a few minutes. But now yeah. I can create that scene with Casey or Splinter or or not. The thing all is, all I remember. Listen, all I remember is him getting yelled at by like shredder's second in command that's the only Tatsu. thing i remember yeah Tatsu. 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 The, the thing yeah. with this is unfortunately this is going to go up in value right like the spirit of splinter which we talk about in, in one of the one of the episodes of the jane rob toy show that i showcased that was a loot crate exclusive as well and those you know instantly skyrocket you and i really don't collect that often for the value for like the investment side of it there's four figures that come with Loot Crate, one from each kind of line. So there's this one. There's a cartoon NECA one coming, I think, as well. And some other crap that I'll showcase on this show if it gets here by then. Uh, yeah. So this definitely will go up in value to like the 50 bucks that it cost or whatever it was. 40, 50 bucks. So there's that. It is a cool one-off character. I'm not going to get April, so I can't do that diorama. I don't want to open my Casey Jones, so I can't do that. So this will probably just go... I don't know. Maybe there'll be some cool auction thing that I can donate it to or something like that. No, don't even think about it. <laughs> that, that, that's not coming anywhere near the auction. <laughs> I don't want that thing. Uh, I love the robot menace. This is awesome. Don't be disappointed if his value goes down. Well, I tell you what there, uh, robot menace. Th this show isn't helping his value at all, is it? <laughs> Cactus Jamie is uh, saying know, nobody I wants figure, Danny. I figure, not even. Uh, my action figure spotlight spotlight was a little lazy with the defenders because it was on the desk. Like I got the whole Batman set here. Does that not count? I got the Batcave no. and the all that. No, does it count? No, no, not really. Because well, uh, Rob, if you don't like it, I was just gonna take it back. Well, can you just put it back in the box, there, Scotty? 
<laughs> just put it back there. Uh, yeah. What else is going boogie? on? You, you got anything boogie going on? Fans, yeah. Put boogie nights. No. No. Too soon. Um, you got the touch. Uh, you got something going on going before on next on. week? Anything happening? It's it's really crazy. Not. Uh, just going out there and, and purchasing figures it's like like we said at the beginning of the show it's really nice to come down here and just enjoy what's down here there's you know, I know I'm so what you busy. mean because like i'm just enjoying danny <laughs> with a sid vicious shirt that's the best part that's the best part that um, makes that the figure cut. i you know what i almost neck is always great at doing that stuff but i almost expected them to like kind of have a blurred out or like a a, a similar yeah. look to sid vicious but not really sid vicious but that's the exact if sid that vicious, could have been cloth like, goods oh man oh god then he would be all puffy and the puffy shirt yeah. <laughs> so nothing going uh, do on we get to, do we get to all the comments here yeah we've been talking about it don't i hated that danny guy definitely opened the coaster shirt the shirt was the best thing on Danny, nobody wants Danny, not even his dad. Don't be disappointed. Oh, goes down. That's so evil. <laughs> I, I I would rather the dad character because at least it's April's boss, right? So there's at least a double. I don't, I know. don't even. I don't nobody even wants that. that. Like this is where they're starting to stretch. Like how many more figures are there really going to be? We've got Farm Casey well, in April. You know, I think that's get trash when compactor shredder. That's when you're getting it. That's when they're going to get into the second movie and. Go well, they have the already, movie. right? They have Secret of the Ooze yeah. guys, and they already have variants of Secret of the Ooze. They have two versions of Shredder from the Secret of the Ooze. Yeah. So they got like Shadow Master Shredder, and they've got Toka and Razar, of course. So who knows? Who knows, Jay? Who knows? What about the wait? There's the pizza guy. One of the pizza. Aquino. Guy. Yeah, I think I think yeah. he's rumored as well. I think he's rumored well, as well. For mm. God's sake, if they made Danny, they can make a No, or Kino. don't you yeah. dare compare Danny to any of those other bootleg fourth tier characters. They could have a four pack you? of the Foot Clan kid thugs. I've remember always they go, wanted Vanilla Ice. Danny goes in. Yeah. Oh, oh with Vanilla Ice. Yeah, Rob, what's his face? He would be all over that, man. Yeah, um, I'd be on that. He's very, very proud of being in that movie, as I would too. I mean, it's an iconic film. Go Ninja, go Ninja, go. Kind of. Kind of. All right, well, let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. Where can people find you to see more Dolly goodness um, every day? Oh, just, yeah. Anyone who's looking for me and not too hard to find, it's just my name. Just my name, Jay Bartlett. So on YouTube. Jay Bartlett, The Exorcist. Yeah. Jay Bartlett, the chef. Jay Bartlett, the there's another one, the guitarist that I found. Jay Bartlett, the guitarist, and there's just me, Jay Bartlett, and I got the GI Joe explosion. I just talk about toys and play with toys on my channel, so check it out. Um, I uh, I recently yeah. discovered that Ricky Rocket is a paranormal investigator as well as a as a vegan. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> You can find me on Twitter, Did- folks, at Rob and Bob. You can follow us uh, on Instagram at the Jay and Rob Toy Show and at Action Figure Adventure. And hey, hit up at Jinx TV Canada. See what all their other shows are going on. And because they're really great folks, share our stuff a lot. Uh, we always end every episode with the same old story. Did you know Ricky Rocket interviewed <laughs> Kurt Cobain? <laughs> That's like his no, big I didn't. claim. I love Ricky you, Ricky. Rocket's I'm just the- kidding. He's the drummer for Poison. That's a pretty good claim to fame. Well, that's true. Yeah. You know what's hilarious about this? And we can't edit this now. I thought you were talking about Ricky Rackman (laughs) from Headbangers Ball. (laughs) This is amazing. This is amazing. This is this is your legacy now. Nobody's watching. I thought you said Ricky Rackman, but you said Ricky Rocket. So what I just said makes no sense. Ricky Rackman interviewed Kurt Cobain. Okay, well, now we're gonna sign off the show. So for the (laughs) for the For the love of toys and the warmth of scarves, take care of yourselves. And each other. Because playtime, Jay, is the best time, especially with the jokester. All right. Take care, guys. We'll see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel.